Hey there, my name's Sully, and welcome to another episode of the Scout Helicopter Diaries, the series where I take you through some gameplay in a scout helicopter and talk you through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, all to help you be a better pilot out there on the battlefield. Today, I want to talk you through some tips and strategy for finding the little bird on the map Dawnbreaker. First, if you're flying by yourself without anybody repping you, and then a little bit again when you have a teammate that's supporting you. The thing about Dawnbreaker is that it's a great map for both learning how to fly and flying by yourself once you get a good feel for it. The three well-defined lanes, the water here, that's between A and D, the main street that takes you between C, D, and B, uh, as well as the hill that takes you up to E, allow you to kind of hide and get some cover away from whether it be the AA gun, other helicopters, or stingers, and that allows you to, you know, kind of stay alive more, uh, work on your precision also between the buildings if you're just learning how to fly. Now, here right outside the gate, I'm going to work the water uh, and make sure I'm picking my targets correctly. You see there I locked on first the attack helicopter, but then I saw the scout helicopters here, so I locked on to him, uh, win the battle, and then get out of there because um, I don't know what's behind me, and I still don't quite know exactly where the AA gun is. And through the rest of this gameplay, you're going to see that uh, I don't do the greatest job of keeping track of the AA gun. But right there, I didn't know where he was, so I use my spawn back here from the US spawn as my my base. And I've talked about this in my videos before. When you're flying the scout helicopter, you're always going to make sure you've got a couple of fallback points you want to go to, reassess the situation, get back into action. That's what I do. I swing back in. I see the attack helicopter here. Uh, hit my ECM just in time and get off a uh, another missile after he pops his uh, countermeasures and brings him down. But just as I get him down, I get hit. And so I'm going to try to make my way to B because we have it for cover and I get hit again. So I'm going to try to land this in the back of B because we control it and heal it myself. It's not the prettiest of landings, but since I am an engineer, I hop out and repair just in time to save it. And I know that there's going to be people descending upon it. So I just need to get just enough in there to get up and get out of there so I can heal back in my base. Uh, and that really is my first, you know, main point, that if you're flying by yourself, you need to be the engineer with repair tool, because nobody else is going to repair. So you need to be a little more ca little more cautious uh, and take the time to go repair yourself. And so when I've healed, I get back into action, see that the scout helicopter's landed on the top of uh, D, so I'm going to go ahead and kill him. Swing in to make sure that nobody else is in there. See these people between the buildings on the point, get a couple of kills, but swing back out. And you'll see that these kind of these figure eights around the buildings are your go-to, your bread and butter here. Um, as I get those two other guys, one of which had a lock on Stinger, it looked like. So that was a really, those were really set of good kills. Swing back out to the water. Narrowly miss a jet, which normally aren't that much of a factor here on Dawnbreaker. Not much room for them to maneuver. And so I swing back through to the mid lane. Uh, use this building as cover to kind of take a look at D. And now one of your main jobs as a scout helicopter on Dawnbreaker is to clear all the roof rats. And so it's a little bit of stability. Get up there. I, I want to kill this guy up here. Um, and I'm also getting hit by what is probably the A-gun now from their spawn. So I'm going to plan to once again heal myself. But I also see that there's a spawn beacon up here. And you need to take care of those, otherwise that roof rat's going to be right there, back there. And so once again, you can see me here. I've swung back out to the water lane, all the way back down to their spawn on D. And that's where you can kind of really help your team push between A and D and B. C is kind of an open uh, point, and you can't really help much as a, as a scout helicopter. Um, so those are your go-to points. And so I swing back to spawn, being pursued by a scout helicopter, and used, you know, one of the, the main tricks to just kind of draw him back. And you can see by now I've got some squad members uh, in Bulldozer coming in with the attack helicopter to finish the job. By now I've got monkey repping me, which means that I can be a little more aggressive. I don't have to worry so much about uh, every hit that I take. I know that he's going to rep, so I'm going to go ahead and take care uh, take care of these roof rats again just before that guy sets up a spawn beacon um, because they really, really love those roofs and I really, really hate when they're up there. Um, but the AA gun was getting me from their spawn again, so we're just going to do the normal, you know, go to home base, get to where you're safe, get some reps, reassess the situation so you're on some home ground. And as I swing back, I take a look and see that A is uh, burning, so I can either kind of cap it or I can help my team clear uh, by just splashing my cannons in there um, and getting that guy on the point. Well, so once again, now that I have a rep, uh, monkey repping me, I can be a little more aggressive. And is doing so uh, where I said before, you don't want to, you want to stay away from C. I'm going to go ahead and put it on C and do a couple of passes here, see what uh, damage I can do and how I can help. First is putting some rounds into that room. There are some guys that can spawn in there. Um, and then after that, I want to help kind of focus on the vehicles, help them, you know, kind of limit the other team's mobility. And of course, here's an example of where the vehicle's sitting on top of C, and I know from experience as an infantry that that's very annoying and very hard to get up there. So I'm going to go ahead and see what I can do, and luckily enough, he's damaged enough, so I just finished the job. And then turn around, 
work this mid lane here and take out some more guys on the ground. And so through here, you can see that the two lanes I'm working spawning from the US are water and mid. And when I'm swinging through mid this second time, I actually run into the AA gun finally. He's been taking some pot shots at me from their spawn, but there he is. And luckily he's either not focused on me or missing me entirely, so I swing right by him through hill, through mid, back out to water. But now I know where he is. He's a known entity. I'm going to try to keep that in the back of my mind throughout the rest of the round. And as I swing back through mid, as long as I keep going and use these buildings, it should be fine. And I'm going to go ahead and put some rounds on those vehicles because I want to help my engineers out. One or two RPGs into them and my couple of rounds uh, from the cannons can make all the difference. And as I swing back here through D, we're going to see one of the differences between the two uh, scout helicopters, the Little Bird and the Z11W. Uh, I miss a guy, so I'm swinging back here through the buildings just to get around these bags to get him. And since I'm in the Little Bird, it's a little shorter. Little, it's got a little skinnier of an I can make that turn. Not sure I make that turn in the Z11. But as I make my way out to the water, I, I'm getting a lock on, and I don't quite know what it is. I've already burned my a, my ECM, so I want to get back to my spawn and reassess. There he is. Lock onto him. Get one away. Um, once again, drag him back. Let the stationary A help me out a little bit. And in this case, he's damaged enough that the A gun's just going to take him out. And so now that I have two people repping on the little bird, I get a little more aggressive through D, kind of help my team push it a little bit. But the AA gun has my number. So I swing back around the back, see a couple of people running along the walkway here, get one, um, reload, uh, and get a set of three right here, get a three kill on those guys huddled up in the corner and swing back out. But the AA gun's waiting for me and almost completely gets me. And that's really going to foreshadow the end of this round. Um, the AA gun's pushed up to D in that mid lane where he can be the most effective, and uh, he's gonna he has my number on the next couple of passes here. And that's really it for the video. So I hope you learned a little bit about how to be a better flyer on Dawnbreaker, how to use your cover, what your main objectives are. If you're on the US side, once again, the sites that you can push are A, B, and D. Um, and you, if you know use that C lane, swing back in the middle when you can. If you're on the Chinese side, it's a little more difficult, but you can work E, uh, B, and D as well using those buildings as cover. And if you're by yourself, you're going to have to be an engineer with a repair tool and fall back when you can to your home base and make your own repairs. But if you have a team, go ahead and be as aggressive as you want on those three points. Well, that's it for me in this episode of the Scout Helicopter Diaries. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments. Until next time, guys and gals, I'll see you on the battlefield.